Hello guys, welcome to my very first official YouTube video that I've been meaning to put out for quite some time. Uh, life got in the way, move country, blah 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 blah. Another story for another day I suppose, not really tech related. Um, so today I've got two Noctua coolers, both of them are low profile, one is quite clearly slightly more low profile than the other one. And um, so what they are is I've got an NH-L9A AM4, which is specific to the AMD uh, AM4 platform, you know, Ryzen. Um, this one does have other variants. You can get them on Intel and you can also get them on like AM3 if you wish, but I can't imagine anyone's building a new AM3 rig. So that's that one. I'll open the box up in a minute. And I've also wanted to cover with you the NH-L12S. Uh, this one is larger uh, by quite a considerable amount. It's almost twice the height of this one when this is in low profile mode and more than twice the height when it's in high clearance mode, which I'll cover again in a bit. So both of them have a Noctua PWM fan and come with a low noise adapter, which I'll show you in a second. Um, as I mentioned, low profile mode, high clearance mode. This one is actually uh, the upgraded version of an award, the award winning NHL 12. So I'm not entirely sure what is different to it, but I'm sure they've got a reason behind it. On the back, same as on the, the, the little baby, slight brief description in nine different languages, uh, all the way into, I believe, Chinese, yeah, Chinese, English, German, whichever you want. Uh, and on the side is just uh, brief specs of the fan, the overall height, the cooler compatibility. This one obviously is strictly AM4 and this one here, the uh, the L12S, goes everywhere from LJ1150, that socket range, through to LJ2011, 2066, and all the way from AM2 to AM4, which also includes, of course, uh, the uh, FM lineup, which is the previous APUs from AMD. So on the side, again, just a little brief des description about the cooler itself and the low and high profile modes. So I'm going to go ahead and open them up, and we'll see what's in them. On the first one, you're greeted immediately with an accessories pack. So what we have in here will be everything from the Secure Mount 2, uh, Secure Firm 2 even, which is quite frankly the best mounting system I've ever used on any cooler from any manufacturer. It is just so easy to use and it's just an absolute pleasure to install. So I look forward to using that one. Uh, other than that, you've obviously got the, the other mounts for the Intel system. You've got three different booklets here for the various uh, install procedures based on your platform. You've got some thermal paste, low noise adapter, which would be nice if it was a slightly shorter cable perhaps, but that's just me. Of course you also get a Noctua case badge if you're into that sort of stuff. And the essential screwdriver, which most of you should have, but if you've got a fatter ri uh, like lip around the side, you won't be able to get this cooler installed. So it's nice, even though this, you know, costs nothing. Um, it's nice to see that they included it for the people who might need it. Uh, other than that, of course, you've got the AMD specific mounting set. And that's pretty much it for the accessories guide. Uh, the accessories. So if we open up further, again, uh, cardboard, not really that important. Shove that over there. Plastic cover protecting the base plate of the CPU cooler. If we go ahead and pull that out, and that's don't need that anymore, I suppose. The way that Noctua package everything is pretty much testament to their product, their product quality as well. Uh, you, you'll be very hard pushed to find your Noctua product end up in your hands in a broken state. I mean, their packaging is just is superb. So, unfold like so. The cooler slipped out. I shouldn't have let it slip out. So there's again, there's nothing in this. It's just purely to hold the cooler in place. And there's a piece of cardboard to remove to unveil the fan. So as you can see, it is in low profile mode right out of the box. Uh, whether you want it that way or not, that's you know tied up to you. Um, what is interesting to me, as soon as you pull it out, the fan is actually set up to suck air in from the motherboard and RAM and that sort of area and then blow it out the top rather than sucking it through the heatsink and then getting the freshest possible air through here and then blowing it out onto your board. Um, I will test it with both the fan this way round, with it the other way round so that it's sucking air through and also blowing air through. Um, I do have a suspicion which one's going to perform the best. I could be wrong. Not 
you know, it's not rocket science, but uh, yeah, that's that cool. That's a dainty little thing. So I'm going to go ahead and set that aside right there. Mass mat coming in clutch. So that allows us to take a look at the L9A AM4, which is a very small and very nicely packaged uh, mini ITX cooler. Uh, at the top, you're, gra you're greeted with a, well, congratulations, okay, if you want to be congratulated on choosing Noctua's L9A AM4. Uh, that also, it is an instruction guide, it folds out, just tells you very quickly how to install the cooler. Again, it's not rocket science, but if you're new to it, it may prove useful to you. Um, it doesn't use the Secure Firm 2, it uses a slightly different me method of mounting, which not ideal, but I can see why they've done it that way. It gives them, you know, greater uh, surface area on the heatsink itself. So the first thing you want to do is remove this little foam insert, which has your Noctua NTH1 paste, your low noise adapter, which again, I wish had a shorter cable on it, but um, I won't be too picky. And you've also got your case badge. You either love it or you hate it. I'm not going to use it. Uh, and you've got four screws right here, which will be used to mount the cooler, which you need. Uh, upon first getting into the box right here, we've got four screws tucked away in the side. These are 25 uh, millimeter allowing fans, so you can change this cooler for a taller one. Uh, for, sorry, the fan for a taller one, if you wish. Uh, the reason you've bought this is probably because you need minimal height on your cooler so I can't see too many people wanting to change it but if you do they've given you the screws to allow for it. So this comes straight out in one big plastic piece which brings me to the back plate which I mentioned earlier. You need this because it has the uh, screws actually cut out for the cooler itself so that you're not gonna you know run into issues with your stock AMD back plate so you'll need this. Uh, put that aside and then the cooler just pull it, yeah, just pull it right out. There it is. It, 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 it's tiny. It's 37 millimeters from the mount here to the top of the fan, which, quite honestly, I'm not sure how it's going to perform on a big 8 core like the uh, Ryzen 7 1700 that's in my system. Uh, should be alright. It's stock overclocked. Uh, I think it'll put up a fair fight. I, I think it's worth a try. I mean, I've been pleasantly surprised by a small cooler like this before, and especially when you consider how many F, uh, fins per inch, also known as FPI, is along this cooler, as well as the two heat pipes that go from the base plate and curl. One goes around this way, and the other one curls around and goes that way to give you maximum heat dissipation throughout the entire cooler, through every single fin, and it's, it's going to be interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and install them, test them, and I'll be back as soon as I've taken a look at, the, at these uh, coolers. And it is worth noting, if you do care about aesthetics, they have a lovely covering on the end with an Octua name on the side, either side actually, which it, it just, it makes the product feel that much higher quality, you know? They go the extra mile, so let's get them tested. I'll be back shortly. Okay guys, testing done. I'm back to uh, the rig as it were before I started you know installing all of these coolers and changing stuff around uh, I gotta say I'm pleasantly surprised um, especially with this little one here what surprised me the most is at stock which is three oh, I run at 3 gigahertz 1.168 volts or something along those lines uh, it was only about nine degrees warmer than the be quiet dark rock pro 3 which is insane considering it's so much smaller um, it, it, it just blew my mind, quite honestly. The uh, L12S did a little bit better. It was only about 67 degrees warmer uh, at stock. However, once you start to overclock, that's when things start to get interesting, uh, especially when you add those no low noise adapters into the equation. This miniature cooler, as I pretty much expected, you cannot run overclocked at 3.7 with 1.26 to 1.27 volts. Uh, it just it hits 85 degrees at which point um, I'm not comfortable letting it go any further because I feel that instability is just around the corner and often you know running at such high temperatures it's just it's not recommended so this one unfortunately for me is not going to pass it is technically deemed a fail um, but what did surprise me is the fact that with the low noise adapter it, while it did obviously still hit 85 degrees 
it was only it took two minutes and about two minutes and 30, 30 odd seconds to hit 85 degrees but when you take off the low noise adapter and just run it as is you know with just a pwm it takes over three and a half minutes so there's an extra minute of uh time difference to the point where it hits the same limit that i personally impose on it so it just goes to show that airflow is key um the more you can cram through the heatsink the you know the better the cooler is going to be and obviously that's the story for every single cooler out there that's ever been invented but just bear that in mind um stock absolutely fine you can get away with a mild overclock not quite a 3.7 and higher um voltage because obviously that you know that these chips run extremely hot as it is once you start to cram the voltage through um this one however was able to maintain a 3.7 gigahertz overclock the same one as this one that couldn't uh, and even with the low noise adapter only hit about 80 degrees which yes is on the warm side and yes it's in a bigger chassis than you would have like in a low profile case so it might not be 100 percent representative of you people using those really small ultra compact cases but it can handle a fairly beefy overclock uh, and quite honestly both of them i didn't even hear over my case fans which astounded me because they're not loud as it is i mean they whisper quiet the be quiet fans all right, guys, it's conclusion time. Uh, so you just saw the graphs in more detail, obviously showing you the results of both these two coolers compared to the Be Quiet in my system at the moment. Um, as I said before, pleasantly surprised with how well this cooler can actually handle the heat uh, in mostly in a stock scenario. I mean, overclocked is a little bit different. Uh, I wasn't expecting wonders from this. It is such a small cooler after all, but it did better than I thought it would. So I'm not going to just you know discredit it completely uh if you're looking for a very slim cooler in a small area and it happens to have to be on am4 uh this one is probably your best bet i highly recommend this it's only 40 dollars depending on where you shop and where you live you know for tax reasons and stuff um bear in mind as well that the fan itself is probably about 10 to 12 dollars you get a lot of heat sink for not a lot of money and quite often more often than not actually expensive seems to come to people's minds when you think about buying small so this one is a nice it's, it's a breath of fresh air basically so i'm going to put that one aside that gets a thumbs up from me and then i'm going to talk about the slightly bigger brother and as i previously mentioned i did say i was going to change the fan around so you can see on the top now is the fan rather than underneath and it's blowing air through uh this is the final configuration that i tested um what it did is actually by blowing the air through the heatsink freshly from the case itself it actually brought the temperatures down not by a significant amount i'll be honest here it's it's about one to two degrees celsius uh not you know it's not going to save you from getting an extra 100 megahertz whatever out of your chip it's just it's not going to happen um but what did happen is because it was obviously slightly cooler the surrounding area was ever so slightly cooler the motherboard and ram and that didn't really change because it was still it was warm air pumping through here and it was uh, a slower fan, uh, like airflow coming through the bottom, so it wasn't quite so directed onto the board. However, when you change the fan and put it in this orientation, but on the bottom, so that it's sucking the air through the heatsink and dissipating onto the motherboard, the VRM, etc., uh, you actually see a quite a large difference. So, my motherboard itself came down, uh, the VRM area came down by about six to seven degrees by doing that. Uh, yes, the, the CPU temperatures went up by again one to two degrees not much um probably because it's sucking the air through and it's not quite as efficient as actually like pushing the air through but uh the motherboard temperatures came down a lot which in turn i believe will also help to bring the cpu temperature down a little bit uh ram was cooled the uh the chipset itself if you're on an itx motherboard would have been cooled much better of course i'm not on an itx board as you can see uh so i would recommend keeping it underneath um how, unless you want to see Noctua's lovely brazy maroony browny kind of color scheme, I guess what they got going on, leave it like that or put it underneath if you really need to save the space. Uh, one thing to point out here is I'm not sure why there's no cap over this fan and it's just bare like this. Uh, I don't know if that's how it's meant to be or if there's meant to be a sticker or, or anything, but that's just how mine came. So I'm just uh, I'm just going to leave it like that. If it comes if yours comes like that as well, then obviously that's how it's meant to be. Um, but for the most part this one will run you 50 bucks again tax and area location depending so i'd recommend this one as well if you have more space but if you're 
if you're absolutely limited on space and using one of those uh, like Dan S the S uh, A4 case I think it's called the smallest ITX case is currently in production um, you won't go wrong with this cooler this one won't fit I know that um, but Overall, uh, two very good coolers for what they are. I mean, I wasn't expecting them to beat the bigger Be Quiet cooler. Obviously, that's just unreasonable. So, if you need one, these should be highly, highly on your, uh, you know, on your shopping list. And I'd like to finish off. Thank you guys for watching my very first proper YouTube video. Uh, I will try to get you out some more. Uh, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, hit the dislike button, but go easy. It's my first YouTube video, I'm trying it. Uh, I will say now, I have some Gale Super Loose Memory. This is the 32 gig kit for AM4. It is currently not available retail, so look out for that one. I'll show you off all the goodies and let you see. I'll even, look, I'll even give you a sneak peek if I can get the RAM out there. there. I, you can see more online. You know, it's not hard to find on the interwebs, but uh, look forward to that one and until the next time, thank you very much for watching guys and I'll see you later.